Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prevail. They all fell. All right, we're not putting Eminem in this in this list, Mister King 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 Odo. Wait, wait, but wait, 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 wait. That's somebody. I feel like as we got older. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not talking on my ass. I'm not trolling. I feel like as we got older, we did L we did Eminem dirty because Eminem had all of us millennials, maybe not you, at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Talking about him, and mm -hmm. as soon as we got older, it was like Eminem, not all that. Like, bro, it's crazy mm -hmm. how soon niggas forget, how quick people forget, mm -hmm. and I don't like that because mm -hmm. I was one of those people too who was who almost fell into that category of who, uh hating on, hating, Eminem? On, hating on Eminem. Yes, I was almost there, but I had to think about it. I had actually had an interview with one of his artists, and I'm like, yo, wait, bro, because even when we talking about. When 50 Cent dropped uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, mm -hmm. it was Eminem time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was it was heavy Eminem time. I wouldn't. All right. Well, first of all, I would never deny his greatness. But when we talk and he's got a catalog, like, let me not diss y'all. I'm not trying to diss nobody and say niggas don't got catalog. But when you start talking about catalog, especially if we're talking about versus battle shit. When you say Lil Wayne. You're talking about Little Wayne features. Little Wayne had a hundred. What are you talking about? When, when we talk about top five greatest catalogs, you're talking about not only the albums, but you also talk about the verses that was contributed to people's songs. That's a part of his catalog. Yeah, for sure. So, both had four summers with nothing but whole features. Yo, there was years where Hove albums didn't come out. Hove was still number one because Hove was doing features for everybody. Features for his squad, features for R&B singers he was fucking, features for R&B niggas that he was cool with. Yo, the nigga do two albums with R. Kelly with the goddamn, come on, bro. Like, and had hits all throughout them times. So, like, when you talking about a catalog, we're talking about top five catalogs, and that's the reason why I'm saying Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes not only had multi-platinum albums with five six mega hits on each album he also had the crazy feature run as well so he's out here giving niggas features left and right up and down all over the place so like the catalog is deep so i'm not disrespecting eminem and i feel like kanye is a cheat code because kanye is a producer i'm so not he's putting bust in my top five but i'm not mad at somebody putting him in their top five yeah 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 and yo we can easily put kanye in top five but kanye is a producer so he produced for mad niggas and then would just slide the verse into that joint because that's what an ill nigga do you know what i'm saying and he got hits he got hits like crazy and, and different is, genres. Is one of them so my like you know, is so little wayne went through this a little bit this is my only thing with kanye what have you done for me lately? His music, his last project slapped, I think. It was Bunches? good. Yeah, but his verses, his, his his lyrics was trash. I hated it. Like, I could have did without Kanye West on a Kanye West album. That's just how I felt. But, I guess well, let, me, let me not say that. I could have dealt without Kanye West lyrics on a Kanye West album because it, it wouldn't have been a project if it wasn't for Kanye West. So that, mm -hmm. let me clear that up. But going back to my point, Lil Wayne faced this a little bit. After Lollipop, when he got into a skateboard bag, niggas kept trying to say Lil Wayne was falling off. They mm -hmm. ain't like him. And then he mm -hmm. bounced back crazy. So I say mm -hmm. that to say, we know the industry. We know the life. We know the game. It's about what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. And we've been asking for old Kanye West for too long now. So at what point do we say... Are we canceling Kanye? Oh, please tell me we can cancel Kanye. Come on, because I know you're the big Kanye fan, but can we bury this nigga in the backyard, please, bro? Oh, no, I'm with that. I'm not mad Diddy. at that. No, I'm not Before mad we at that. bury Diddy, let's bury Kanye. Let's just... He can still come out and do old ass hits, but... We can't, wait, 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 wait. We can't bury Kanye before we bury Diddy because Diddy is doing real live foul shit to people. I don't think <laughs> Kanye West has... You know what I'm saying? Like He gave millions to HBCUs. You said Diddy gave millions to HBCUs. Yes. What the hell that got to do with anything? If he trout, if he if he fucking sex trafficking little girls, like what are we talking about? Like, he created the love album, bro. Come on, you he's trolling, love right? the love album. Yeah, he's loving on, <laughs> bro. That's another conversation. Listen, all I'm saying is we can cancel Jay. I'm okay with that. Like, I, Jay did it to himself. You know, I'm a big Jay fan. 
Right. And, and when I say cancel, I'm not talking about y'all gay niggas cancel, where it's not you. But I'm saying I'm saying y'all niggas at, at home gay nigga canceling because a nigga say some crazy shit out of his mouth and now you don't want to talk to him no more. No, not that cancel. I'm saying retire from the music side. You know what I mean? I feel like he just need to take a couple years off. He need to find some young talent, attach himself to that, and then, you know what I'm saying, produce some other niggas. I you feel like he needs to find his way musically. You know the problem I think that well, well yeah what? is he's having too much success. I mm. pray I never I pray I never fall into this situation. And again, not to keep going back to the zodiac shit, but Ye has been the definition of defying all the eyes his entire career. Oh, he's oh, been the def- he's been the definition. No, he's been that. Let me tell y'all at home. He been waiting to give his Kanye speech go ahead bro i'm no, listening i'm not i'm just saying because it hurts me to to not really care for kanye west no we, we're gonna sit here and you're gonna tell me that he's been the underdog his whole cr- yo if you want to say the first half of his career he's been the underdog that's cool but after the second album goes multi-platinum you're not the underdog anymore <laughs> hey, dude, that's the whole the thing. And, and, the and moment graduation hit and those mega hits went off, you have become the, yo, you are music, your music royalty. Kanye one to hold standard. Yours? That's the thing. Oh, I'm not standard. listening to you. No, but that's the thing. No, I'm bigger than the world. Million bro, record. Bro, bro, he's he's music. World. Royalty. Listen, that's why I can that's why I can relate so much. But cool, who is the world when I'm bigger than the world in my head? Who, like who think about it bro no cap i'll make a small analogy right what, what i'm saying is is that you're trying to say he's the underdog you're talking about the guy that even at his most hated because right now kanye is at his most hated is doing two hundred thousand records sold in the first week with the album being taken down put up taken down put up taking down come on yo he's not an underdog nigga I'm that's like you, that's the gemini that's shit a, you just no, the gemini I'm saying, bro i'm saying so uh-huh. who's standing isn't he the underdog, right? He came in a game, mm-hmm. producer, right? Mm-hmm. Niggas ain't want to give him a chance to rap. Mm-hmm. He started rapping, he killed the game. I'm, I'm talking about competing mm-hmm. with 50 Cent at 50 Cent peak. Mm-hmm. A lot of niggas talk about get rich or die trying, but they don't talk about, um, what was it, uh, the massacre. Mm-hmm. The massacre did crazy too. Mm-hmm. He was competing with 50 Cent at his peak, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's two different examples. Mm-hmm. I understand to the world, he was Kanye West. But even then, Kanye West had things to prove. He made the red Octobers and took Nike sales through the roof. And they act like they they did the same thing a company did to me. They act like they did the numbers because it was Nike. No, it was Kanye West. Cool. Mm-hmm. He wasn't getting he wasn't getting acknowledged by the, the top designers of the world. He kept asking for that. They wasn't showing him love. What did he do? He go to Adidas and flip Adidas upside down with the Yeezys. Come mm-hmm. on, so I get it. So you're you saying he's not he's not the underdog because he dropped all his music, but that's the whole standard, bro. He want he wanted to do something bigger. So even with this last thing, Vulture, he got no real, he got no promotion. They didn't push this. If anything, they try to take it down. He still go number one independently. That's my mm-hmm. thing. That's why I say I think Kanye West is his biggest. I think he's his biggest downfall. Kanye West is Kanye West's mm-hmm. biggest downfall, and this is mm-hmm. why it's sad for me. But I don't really care for him anymore because. I don't like his attitude. It's like, bro, you're doing too much now. Like, I do mm-hmm. miss the old Kanye West, and I don't like the way you're talking to people. I'm just not feeling it. But I'm not about to ignore that he's been the underdog to his standard his entire career, and I can see that, and I respect it. And if, if that were true, when you when he sits in front of some way like Sway Calloway on the Sway in the Morning show, and he's and he's making these statements about, yo, these companies don't respect me, da 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 and Sway saying, bro, do it on your own. Like and and Sway is saying that because you have he we know you have the power you have the audience you've built the the legacy you've built the greatness we know you are designing guru we know you got fashion sense but you know what I mean he put himself in underdog positions the same way he put himself in that position now he put himself in that but that doesn't necessarily make him an underdog that just makes him a big ass dog that be climbing underneath a table wrecking shit he like you a right. big ass dog in a little ass apartment you but right. he's not an underdog he's you a big right. ass Hold up. you right Jay <laughs> but let's paint a picture there let's paint a Go picture ahead. here mm-hmm. you're absolutely right but can we say that Kanye West would not have went number one independently if he didn't give us 
if he didn't have the resume to back it up. For example, great, agreed. He can, he can, he can post some clothes online now because of what we saw him do with Adidas, what we mm. saw him do with Nike. We've seen it. So now, like, so I get, I get everybody so quick to say, do it on your own. But there's a difference between doing this for a respected brand and then branching off by myself and then trying to start off by myself. It's different. I see mm -hmm. it. Even, okay. even in my career, right? I was working for DTLR, right? DTLR is a huge company, huge platform. I created <laughs> something that was great. And from there, when I left or when I was forced out, I was able to continue to build off of something that I built off of with, with a company that people recognize. So people recognize Adidas. People recognize Nike. People recognize all of the, the, the people that he's working with. So now, when it's time to go by yourself, you can do that. How many people we, we, we see that's independent? Think about it, Russ. Russ okay. is selling out arenas, right? Right. But Russ, right. Ain't, Russ ain't nobody we talking about. No, I get it. But let me ask you this question, because you are a huge Kanye fan. If Kanye had went to Japan, found a designer and, and showed us the process on YouTube, man, I'm going to, you know, Japanese Japan. I'm finding a Japanese nigga. He show you the process of him sculpting a sneaker from scratch. And you see it because you're Kanye. You're seeing him do this. And he comes out with the Red October without the swoosh on it. You trying to tell me you're not going to cop the Red October? JS1, I'm a fan. I get it. But, bro, you have, like, the world, especially our culture as black people, niggas are the biggest, like, label whores. Niggas is, what's the word? Okay. Like, I, will, I, will, I will respect that. I respect that. And I understand that's the reason why Kanye went that direction. And you, and he's proven the model at this point. So I get you. Think about but, it like this. Go ahead. Uh, Pharrell. Mm -hmm. Even Dapper Dan. If they drop some shit independently, yeah, it'll be a cool brand. It'll be a cool brand. It'll be fire. Yeah, black owned. Salute to that black man. But niggas ain't screaming from the top of their lungs like they doing now. Why? Because they're connected to a bigger source. It's like, nah, I'm about to go grab me some LVs because of um Pharrell. I'm about mm -hmm. to go cop some some Gucci because of Dapper Dan, right? Because they respect Gucci and, and, and LV and they support a black man having a high position in an already high company. Right. I mean, I don't feel like they're... Uh, well, I feel like Dapper Dan is a great uh, example of that. Uh, 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 Pharrell is not really a good example because he's had multiple brands under different banners and they've all done well. Whether it was BBC, whether it was you know Human Race or whatever, whatever. He's always had successful brands, whether it was with a major or with a with a smaller independent. Even the ice cream sneakers that were ugly as fuck, them niggas used to sell the fuck out and then resell for three and four hundred dollars. So like I I mean I feel like he lean, leans more into my example versus anything else. You know what I mean? Like when you're in the fashion you gonna fuck with the fashion, like you know what I mean, and the results are still gonna be the results. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I get where you coming from, and I'm not gonna hate it, but I'm, but I will not, I will not accept the premise that this nigga was. After that, let's just say he was an underdog until he was face to face with Fifty Cent. I feel After like that, you ain't the underdog no more. I feel like he was the underdog in his perspective journey, bro. Like, yeah, he might not have yes. been the underdog in music at the time. Yeah. Respect. He, he, but he was trying to go a different route. He was definitely the underdog. Right. And even now, or with Virtus, with Vultures, he's the underdog. And again, this ain't nobody. This ain't nobody. I'm not making excuses for the man. This ain't nobody fault but his. He was the underdog when he dropped Vultures. Why? Because niggas ain't rocking with him. You said a bunch of off the wall stuff. You mm -hmm. supporting racists. Like, you, you, you're doing crazy stuff. So mm. granted, he put himself in that position, but I'm mm. just saying the facts is the facts. He was the underdog because nobody wanted to support. Nobody wanted to touch Kanye West. No Diddy. Pause. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to touch him. So therefore, he put himself in a position where most artists, when they drop, are not in that position. Mm -hmm. That's I'm just acknowledging. The, that's just my opinion. I'm not mad at you. 